Welcome, everyone. Um, good morning. And uh, it's a very dark day here, I'm afraid. <laughs> At latitude 53, still very dark outside. Um, I'm going to, I've been reading um, TKV Desikatar, who is a, um, a very significant yoga teacher. I've been reading his book and it's, uh, it's really illuminating. Um, I'm going to focus uh, today on, uh, once again, on Thera and Sukha. That is Thera, which is uh, rooted in um, the word uh, to stand, um, to, to lo kind of locate oneself, to stand, take a stand, uh, and to stand and be firm. So it's about steadiness, and it's also about alertness. And Sukha is uh, a good place. It's about comfort and ease and happiness. And I just thought I would read, maybe what we what you can do is you can just stretch out on your back and uh, bend your knees and just rest on your back and, um, and breathe um, evenly. And I won't count your breasts or anything, but just really um, try and settle into the, to the mat uh, and find a good place there. Find your sukha, your comfort, your ease. And I'm just going to remind us, because I've studied yoga and, and done yoga for a long time, and I'm always a student, and I need to be reminded of some things. And uh, um, what this um, yogi uh, promises is for us to uh, think through yoga um, in, these, in this way. It's a sim the simple idea of yoga is the foundation of yoga practice. That is, you begin from where you are. Practicing the, the yoga postures progressively, we gradually achieve more steadiness, more alertness, and overall comfort. If we want to make this principle of an asana practice a reality, we have to accept ourselves just as we are. If we have a stiff back, we have to acknowledge this fact. It may be that we are very supple, but our breath is very short. Or perhaps our breathing is all right, but our body gives us certain problems. It is also possible to feel comfortable in an asana while the mind is somewhere completely different. That is not asana either. It is only possible to find the qualities that are essential to asana if we recognize our own starting point and learn to accept it. And then he goes on to say, um, He goes on to say, there are many definitions of yoga, uh, yoga as a movement from one point to another, a higher one, yoga as the bringing together, the unifying of two things, yoga as action with undivided, uninterrupted attention. These definitions of yoga have one thing in common, the idea that something changes. This change must bring us to a point where we have never been before. That is to say, that which was impossible becomes possible that which was unattainable becomes attainable, that which was invisible can be seen. One of the basic reasons many people take up yoga is to change something about themselves, to be able to think more clearly, to feel better, and to be able to act better today than they did yesterday in all areas of life. In these endeavors, yoga can be of great help and it requires no prerequisites that must be fulfilled before we set out on this path. So I love this. Um, I love this yogi, and I love his writing, and I love this notion of how things become visible that were invisible. And we're just going to. I'm going to move my doggy here. Hey Simone, you go into your go go and go have a little sleep. Good girl. Um, and we're going to be on our back, and we're just going to do some simple resting poses here at the very beginning. We're going to just um, uh, windshield wipe our legs back and forth, very simply here. And we can have our arms up stretched beside us. It'll give our shoulders a little 
uh, a little stretch, we can feel, even when we have our arms up stretched, we can feel our shoulder blades moving down our back so that our chest is open, our breath is very easy here. We feel a sense of comfort and ease. Now we're going to put our feet firmly on the ground and we're going to spread our toes out. And we're going to feel the weight in our feet evenly between our uh, uh, the, the heels and uh, the toes and the pads of our toes. And we're just going to press in. And while we're doing that, we're going to tip, just tip our, our uh, tailbone up, just very simply. And then we're going to tip it down. And we're going to tip it up one more time. And we're going to tip it down. And we're going to inhale and tip your tailbone up. And then tip it down. And this time, we're going to feel our knees uh, and our thighs moving towards our knees. And we're going to press into the floor and raise our buttocks up by moving our knees towards the wall, the far wall. And then we're going to come down. We're going to come down vertebrae by vertebrae. We're not going to make any real effort to reach the apex of our bridge. We're just going to really easily move up and down, moving down vertebrae by vertebrae and up vertebrae by vertebrae, tipping our tailbone up and down. Okay, now we're going to move our hands to our sides and you can just leave them on the ground. You can press your, you can hold on to the edges of your mouth if you like, or you can, um, you can clasp your hands underneath your buttocks and rotate your shoulders in. And in this, in this position, we're going to roll our buttocks up, our pelvis is, and our thighs are moving towards the opposite wall. And we're feeling a really powerful opening in our chest. And we're just going to rest here and breathe. We're going to inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. And we can continue on with these even breaths. Now, if you're tired, you can just come down and you can, you can uh, clasp your knees to your chest. Um, but we're just going to rest here. We have to make sure that we have no pain in the lower back, that we're just feeling the pelvis moving up the knees moving towards the opposite walls and the thighs moving that way. And once again, we've got a really firm, firm um, uh, grounding in our feet. And we should feel, uh, we should feel a sense of ease here, even though there is some effort. So there's a balance between the, the effort that it takes to stay here and the ease we feel. And now we're going to roll down. We're going to put our hands um, flat on the ground and we're going to roll vertebrae by vertebrae down. Okay, and we're just going to lift our knees up and bring them into our chest. You can, you can rock a little bit here. And then we're going to put our feet back down. And we're going to do this another time. Uh, and this time we're going to do uh, We'll do it twice. We'll do it once, uh, just uh, a bridge. And then the second time we're going to do with a few variations. Okay, so we're just going to, once again, plant our feet. I won't give you too much instruction this time, uh, but you want to make sure you have no pain in your lower back. And we're going to roll up by tilting and extending our thighs and our knees to the opposite wall, clasping our hands. And we're just going to rest here, inhaling and exhaling again feeling that sense of ease and strength. Pushing into your feet, you can raise your toes up.
Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. And now we're going to extend our, our we're going to keep our hands clasped and we're going to lift one leg up and with our foot, our heel, we're going to stretch up towards the sky. We're going to imagine our feet touching the stars, our foot, our right foot. And we're going to bend our knee and put it down. We're going to bend the left knee into the chest and then we're going to stretch our left foot up. Our heel is touching the stars. And then we're going to bend the leg and put it down. And we're going to stretch our arms out again and roll ourselves down vertebrae by vertebrae. Once again, we're going to clasp our knees into our chest and give ourselves a little rock. And I think we'll do a little twist here because we happen to be on the floor. And uh, I'm, I'm sort of doing some, the exercises of asana, uh, the way this yogi suggests we do them, that we start on the floor. Um, so uh, we're just going to uh, drop our knees to the uh, left. And we're going to look to the right. So this is a very passive twist, and it's a good way to get started in the morning, a very passive twist. And if you want, you can rotate uh, the arm that is the left arm around, and you can just leave it, say, at, a, at, a, at one o'clock, um, and just park your arm there at one o'clock. Sometimes we have stiffness about one o'clock. And this will help release it. If it's too painful, don't, um, don't do it. Just put your arms straight out. And once again, we're breathing easily here. We're breathing. We're trying to feel our breath fill up, especially uh, the part of our chest that's open here. And now we're going to put our arm back down, straight out, and move our feet into the center, into the center, put our feet on the floor, our feet on the floor, our knees are in the center, and we're going to shift our hips to the left, and we're going to drop our knees to the right. And then we're going to look towards the left. And we're going to move that arm, our right arm, up towards 11 o'clock, and we're just going to leave it there for a minute. I don't know whether you have a kind of sticky spot there, but a lot of people do, and it's helpful just to leave it there. And once again, we're breathing in, and we're exhaling. We're breathing in, and we're exhaling. We're breathing in, and we're exhaling. And we're going to shift our hips back to the center, our knees to the center, our feet to the ground. And we're going to grasp, once again, our knees, give us ourselves a little squeeze. And then we're going to roll onto our side and push ourselves up into a seated position. And then we're going to stand up at the end of our mat. So we did back bends there, a beautiful back bend. And we're going to do some forward bends here. We're going to stand at the end of our mat in Tadasana. And we're going to feel, once again, a real sense of grounding. And Tadasana is, on the one hand, a very easeful posture. And on the other hand, it's a very demanding one. Because it really asks us to wake up our instep. Are the arches of our feet and feel that they ignite our legs, that they give life to us. And we're going to roll our shoulders back. And then we're going to roll our shoulders forward. And then we're going to 
roll our elbows forward. And we're going to roll our elbows back. And then we're going to raise our arms up and look up and feel a little back bend in our upper back. Looking at our hands, this is our focal point. And then we're going to fold forward and just hang there suspended. All the time we're doing this, we're feeling grounded in our feet and we're feeling uh, that we can actually lift our sit bones up a little bit. Now, if this is too much for you, and actually everyone, I want everyone to bend your knees and so give yourselves a little break and then straighten them again if you can. If you can't straighten them, that's fine. Um, and the reason we're doing this is because our muscles have what's what are called muscular spindles in them. And that if we keep pressuring our muscles to stretch, they actually resist us. The spindles are, I don't, I don't really know how to describe how, how they operate perfectly, but I, I, you get the sense that the, the spindles themselves or the, the, the muscles themselves resist stretching. So if you give yourself some ease and you bend your knees, and then you stretch again, you'll find that you can, that, that the muscles will extend further and you can go lower. Now, if you can, and you don't have to do this, but if you can, you can hold on to your ankles and you can use your elbows to uh, actually give yourself a little leverage, a little leverage to pull yourself a bit further down. And you can just let your head hang here. So here we're doing an inversion and this yogi recommends doing inversions in the postures. I'm not teaching shoulder stands or head stands at this point, but I'm, I think I will start teaching shoulder stands. Um, we just need a few blankets to do that. Uh, but, we, but it's very important, I think, in the morning to do inversions. So we're just allowing the blood to flow to our brain. And my brain, at this point in my life, leaves a lot of blood flow. <laughs> A lot of extra blood flow, I think. Um, so, okay, now this is a very long tension, inversion. Okay, now we're just going to um, bend our knees again, and we're going to come up into chair pose. And this, and we're going to try and sit lower with our arms up by our ears if we can. And we want to try and keep a straight back and lower our bum to the floor. And keeping grounded in our feet once more. And then we're just going to tip forward and do a forward bend again. And then we're going to open our arms up and come up. Look up, a little bit of a back bend, and then we're going to stand in Tadasana. Okay. So We've done some back bends, we've done some forward bends, and we've done an inversion. <clears throat> now we're going to uh, do a couple of standing poses, uh, and we're just going to take our left leg, and we're going to step back, and we're going to bend our front leg. We have our left leg, the toes are, are about 45 degrees, they're facing uh, on the diagonal, our front foot is facing out, and we're going to um, bend our front knee and just raise our arms up. And we feel in, in this warrior pose, I just want us to feel we can stretch our fingers out and then we can close them into a fist, stretch our fingers out close them into a fist, stretch our fingers out, and close them into a fist. And we can stretch out, we can stretch our, I've got my um, right leg, right knee forward, and my right arm, I'm just coming down into, I'm gonna just rest on my knee here, 
and take my left arm over on my ear and just try and imagine yourself as an arrow moving on the diagonal towards the corner of the room. And this arrow is moving with a lot of grace and strength. And it's moving maybe towards the moon, wherever the moon is. Okay, and we're going to, now we're going to drop on this hand. We can put it on a block or we can use our fingertips or whatever works. Then we're going to do a little bit of a twist by turning our back foot and we can drop our knee a little bit and go onto the outer edge of our front foot and raise our right arm up. And we, well, all the time we're feeling the strength of our back leg, the energy moving out our back heel, and we're just holding it. Now, if it's too much to keep your hand up, just crook your arm and put the back of your hand on the small of your back. And you feel your chest moving towards the ceiling. Now, this is an aspiration of mine. <laughs> it will never happen. But it's a movement. We feel that movement from the possible to what was impossible a few minutes ago. And now we're going to come back. We're going to put our foot down and our back foot down, and we're going to stand up, back into warrior two. Beautiful, wonderful. So I feel quite invigorated by that. And I'm going to um, come up. And once we're going to go into another little inversion, we've been doing standing postures for a minute. We're going to put our hands on our hip. We've got quite a wide stance here. And we're going to tip over at our hips and uh, keeping a straight back. Um, now we can go down and we can drop our hands to the floor or to blocks. And we can wiggle our, I, I wiggle my legs out a little bit further. Um, and we can just rest here with our hands on the floor. Um, we can stretch our arms out in front of us and so that we can drop our, our head down a little bit so that our back is straight, our hands are by our ears, and we can just rest here. And once again, we feel the grounding in our feet. We make sure that we raise our insteps up, our arches of our feet. Once again, they ignite the legs. And in igniting the legs, we can feel our tailbone, our tailbone, uh, sorry, our sitting bones, our sitting bones lengthening. And our, we can almost imagine that we're lowering down a little bit further. Now, once again, we're working towards a steadiness and an ease, an alertness and comfort. So you should feel no pain at all. It's not, this is a very slow progress yoga. We want to feel we take our time so we don't overstretch muscles or tendons and that we allow everything to work. Now we're going to um, come up. We're going to put our hands on the ground or our fingers or whatever works so that our arms are directly below our shoulders. And we're just going to bend one knee and we can move our hands over towards that knee. And then we're going to walk our hands the other way and bend our, our other knee. In this case, it's my left knee. And I'm feeling a stretch on the, on the groin of the right leg, but not too much stretch, just enough. And then I'm walking back towards the center. We'll do that one more time. Maybe we'll turn our right foot out and we'll bend, we'll walk over towards that right foot. And we can, once again, feel the stretch in the groin, feel the grounding and the arches of our feet rising up. And then we're going to come back and turn our foot back in. We're going to turn our left foot out and walk towards the left foot. 
and feel a lovely stretch on our inner groin that isn't too bad. Now, and then we're going to walk back. And we're going to put our hands in our hip. And we're going to come up again. All right, we can wiggle our feet in a little bit. We're going to do warrior two on the other side. And a bit of a, of a, of a um, reverse warrior. So we're going to turn our left foot out, right foot in, and we're going to put our, we're going to bend our front, our front, our left knee till it's 90 degrees. We're going to feel this knee is straight. We're going to feel our, our whole being ignited once again by the arches of our feet. We're going to lift the arches. We can even lift our toes up to really feel the arches come up. And we're going to extend our arms out. And all the time we're doing this, we're feeling this right back, right thigh turning out. And this one, we make sure that our knee is going over our foot. Once again, we're going to do a few hand exercises. We're going to just stretch our fingers. We can stretch them and make fists. We can shake them. And we can stretch them and make fists again. Anyone who's a writer, <laughs> you are on a keyboard too long and working with your hands is really important. I guess almost anyone is on a keyboard these days. So, okay, we're going to just feel once again, uh, the energy moving us up, like we have a, a thread and a giant puppeteer above us. And, oops, and, uh, then we're going to, once again, drop our elbow down to our thigh and move our arm up and over so that we have a straight line between our back, heel, and the tips of our fingers. We also imagine there's a thread running between our lower ribs and our hips so that we're not extending out our ribs, our lower ribs and our hips. And we can just relax here in the steadiness of this posture. Now, of course, we're making progress. We have never arrived, so I'm very shaky at this point, but I am imagining steadiness that requires this shakiness. And once again, we're going to turn towards our front knee, drop our hand to the floor or on a block and turn the back uh, toes and uh, foot and we can roll onto the outer edge of our front, front foot and raise our left, in this case, it's my left arm up. And once again, we're rotating we're feeling the strength in our back leg. We're trying to straighten our knee and we're rotating our chest up towards the sky. And we can crook our elbow, drop our left arm, the back of our hand to our lower back and rotate a bit further towards the ceiling. And we're going to frame our front foot again. And we're just going to lift our front foot and extend it back and raise it up so that we're in a downward dog. And we're going to uh, put our both our feet down. And this is our first downward dog of the morning. Now, there are lots of things to do with the shoulder. I'm going to spend a lot of time on the shoulders, maybe next class, because I'm learning a lot about shoulders because this posture can be very difficult and even damaging to your shoulders if you don't do it properly. And I did quite a bit of damage to my shoulders, so I've got some good ideas now. Okay, we're going to raise our heels up and we're just going to 
So we're just going to lower and raise our heels back and forth, feeling a sort of pumping action in our legs. It's quite gentle, uh, but it's a really lovely feeling. Okay, and we're going to come forward into a plank. We're just going to rest here for a minute. And then there are lots of ways you can come down from a plank. You can do a chaturanga, bend your elbows and, and uh, go down slowly if you've got a lot of control and strength. Um, or you can uh, do um, what they do in the, um, you can just lower your knees and then your chest and your chin. So that's what I'm going to do because my shoulders aren't great. So just knees. And then I swoop down my chest and my chin, and then I can come up into a small cobra, not a very big one. And then I'm going to come down. And I'm going to just put my cheek on my hands, crossing my, bending my elbows, and just have a little rest here. You can turn your toes in to touch, and that gives you a lovely rest for your feet. Okay, now we're going to put our hands underneath our, oh, maybe we'll tent our fingers out here. And so that we're on our fingertips, we're kind of a stop sign configuration in our shoulders. And we're just going to um, keep our forehead on the floor and lower, try to lower our right shoulder to the ground. Of course, it's impossible because we've tented our fingers. And then we're going to raise them up. We're going to lower our left shoulder to the ground. Then we're going to raise it up. Lower the right shoulder and raise it up. Left shoulder and raise it up. And then we're going to come in and we're going to literally um, lower our shoulder to the ground. So however we can manage that. Our right shoulder and then our left shoulder. And then our right shoulder and our left shoulder. And we're just a little dance of the shoulders here. Now, we're going to put our hands alongside us, our palms up, and we're going to raise both our shoulders up and down. Then we're going to raise both our shoulders up and then down. Both our shoulders up and then down. And this time we're going to raise both our shoulders up and our head. So both our shoulders up and our head. And our, our head is actually moving towards, once again on the diagonal, towards the ceiling. But it's, it's a very, and we can raise our arms up and we can just rest here as long as it feels comfortable. So we're working towards steadiness, alertness, ease, comfort, and the outcome of that is, according to the yogi, happiness. <laughs> so here we are in our happy pose. All right, now we're going to come down and um, we can put our hands once again, put our, our forehead on our hands and just take a rest. We can turn our toes in to touch each other and breathe easily. So we're trying to get back to an even breath. We're inhaling and we're exhaling. We're inhaling and we're exhaling. We're inhaling and we're exhaling. And once again, we're going to put our hands, our hands alongside us. And this time we're going to work on lifting. Or maybe we'll just start with our, our right leg up. Let's just put our hands, uh, palms up beside us, leave our head on the floor, and just stretch out your right toes towards the back and see if you can lift it up a little bit. And it's very energetic. We want to keep our pelvis moving towards the ground. And then we lower. 
So we keep our pelvis moving towards the ground and our leg extending back. We can do our left leg now. Left leg extending up and back. And then down. This time, we're going, to, we're going to put our plant our fingers, our elbows are up in a kind of stop sign, and we're going to lift our right leg up, and we're going to roll it over, take our, take our leg over and drop it to the floor behind us. And we're just going to rest here in this lovely little twist, and we're going to lift our leg up again and put it back down. And this time we're going to lift the left leg up and we're going to stretch that, bend the knee and drop the toes to the ground and feel that lovely twist here. We can just leave our foot here, our toe touching the ground or wherever it goes. It doesn't have to touch the ground. Then we're going to lift that leg up again, straighten the leg and go back into this preparation for locust. And this time we're going to put our leg, our arms beside us, and we're going to raise our arms up and our shoulders up and our head up. And now we're going to raise our legs up any amount. And we feel the energy, we feel the energy in our body. It's like we have an electric current that runs through us from the earth and just invigorates every cell of our body as we're extending our legs out and back and up as much as we can. Our arms, our shoulders are coming up and our head is, is uh, in a good place. And now we're going to come down and rest our head again. Okay, now we're going to rest for a moment. Then we're going to push ourselves back into a child's pose. So here we go. You can open your knees out if it's more comfortable and just rest with your head on the ground in child's pose. Inhaling and exhaling, inhaling, and exhaling. If it's more comfortable, you can bring your hands uh, behind you and, and drop them by your feet. Um, this is very restful. If you need to, you can put something underneath your buttocks to keep them supported. And this should be a very restful pose. Now we're going to extend our arms out again and move our, our arms towards the right leg, stretching them. We're making, we're kind of making what would be a kind of snow angel wing with our hands. And we're really stretching towards uh, out and feeling that beautiful stretch in our arms, but also an opening in our left chest. So our breathing can be as even as you can manage. And you can feel the opening in your chest and in your back body. So when you're inhaling, you feel your chest opening, but especially your back body and your left chest. And now we're going to sweep our arms around again and move towards the left, extending our arms out and feeling such a beautiful release here as we're stretching, but also easing ourselves into this posture. So we have a sense once again of the strength and the concentration and the focus, the breathing that's moving into your right lungs and your back lungs especially, 
and the ease with which you feel if you rest in this posture for a few minutes, you feel yourself settling into it. So I like that notion of settling in. We have such a violent history of settlement in our country, but to settle in can be a beautiful release where you're not grasping at anything. You're not moving towards anything. You're just being in the moment, in the posture. And we're going to move once again to the center, feel our arms stretch out, and we're going to then raise ourselves up to sitting. And we can roll our shoulders back, we can roll our shoulders forward. And we can just sit here for a minute and feel in this posture. If it's too hard on you, once again, you can put something underneath your buttocks or you can sit cross-legged if that's easier for you. But I just want us to sit here and feel really centered because we've done a lot of movement already. Our bodies should feel that both sides of our bodies are a bit we're quite balanced. Um, we can feel, we can drop our head to our chin, to our chest, and we can raise our head up and look towards the ceiling. And we can drop our chin to our chest and we can look up towards the ceiling. We can drop our right ear to our right shoulder, more or less, and then we can raise our head. Drop our left ear to our left shoulder, and we can raise our head. And once again, we can look towards the right to try and peer over our right shoulder, and then we can look to the front. Look towards the left, peer over our left shoulder, and look towards the front. Once again, we'll do drop the chin, look up towards the ceiling, drop the right ear to your shoulder, left ear to your shoulder, look towards the right, look over your right shoulder, and to the front, look over your left shoulder, and to the front. Okay, we can raise our arms up, and we can look up. We can, we can just keep the palms of our hands together and look up. And we can imagine that the upper spine is actually, our chest is actually moving up. And our upper spine is curling like a, like a staff. And then we'll lower our arms. And we can move onto the mat and extend our legs out. We're going to do some sit and dandasana for a minute. And once again, we have our feet. We have our feet here. We can play with our feet for a bit. Always a lot of fun. We can spread our toes wide. And we can scrunch our toes down. Spread our toes wide. Scrunch our toes down. We can point our feet. We can extend our heels really strongly. We can drop both uh, outer edges to the ground. We can, and this is a movement in our hip. And then we can move our hip back, out to the ground, move them back, point them up. We can stretch our toes out. We can try and lower our big toes while raising all of the other toes. We can try and Keep all of our toes raised and lower our baby toe. Keep, and then we can raise all of, try and raise all of our toes, lower our big toes, then lower all the other toes and scratch our toes and then raise them up. Okay. Now we can get a strap, which I didn't tell you to get before, but I do need a strap now, just somewhere here in my, there we go. 
And we're just going to try and keep our box straight. Um, as straight as we as straight as we can, so that we're really sitting on our our tailbone. Now, some people, and I'll, I'll get something to show you. Some people really benefit, and one of my yoga teachers always does this because she benefits from this. You can use a little cushion, or this is actually quite a soft cushion, so it doesn't raise you very much, or a little blanket. You can raise your hips up a little, and that might help you sit on your sitting bones, get a sense of your sitting bones going down. And you can extend the belt around your, your feet. And once again, you're feeling your heels move out. You're feeling your, your toes draw back. And you're sitting upright with, um, and kind of neutral spine. So that means you don't have a sway back. You're not sitting artificially with the with the artificial straightness in your back. We all have we all have squiggly things in our back that we need to honor. So one person's neutral spine will look different from someone else's, and we can hold on to the strap. Um, if you can touch your feet, you can do that. I'm just going to use the strap right now, but um, and you don't really put much pressure on on the strap. It's just kind of to guide you, and then you can feel yourself tipping forward. Now you only want to tip forward. As, as much as is comfortable. And you wanna try and keep a straight spine and see if you can um, see how, how far forward you can go. I'm not sure my spine is straight, but. Um, and once again, then you can come up. We're just gonna do this a few times, lowering down and lowering down and then coming up. And once again, lowering down. And this time we can we can just round our body or, or we can um, really suck in our our navel and feel our just our a, a kind of rest and relaxation here. Now if it does if it feels too painful, if it feels painful, then just come up and sit straight up in Dandasana. That's a very good posture. And then we're going to come up again. We can roll ourselves up if we want. And then we're going to go forward one more time. We're going to feel ourselves at the, moving at the, at the hip, at the hinge. Um, we can feel our chest uh, moving forward. And then we can extend our arms out. Or we can, once again, we can use a strap, whatever feels good for you. And you could just hold on to your ankles if you like. And feel that lovely stretch in your body. You can inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. And imagine yourself moving with every breath or just allowing the breath to take you. There's really no effort here. You're just falling with the breath. Breathing is such an important part of yoga. It allows your body to find a life of its own, really, beyond what you anticipate it can do. And now we're resting here. We're just rounding out our, our, chest, our body and resting here. And now we're going to roll ourselves up or come up with a straight back. All right. Now we're going to take use. Um, I'm going to continue sitting on this pillow because I like the tilt it gives me. And I'm going to extend my legs out. I always find it hurts my heels when I'm doing this, so I, I put like put, put my mat underneath my heels, but if you've got carpet, you're in a good place. And we've got our, our leg, both legs extended, and we're just going to twist towards the right, and we can, we can actually use our hands, our fingers, and we're going to just lift ourselves up, because the important part of this is to feel the sense of 
tightness in our upper body and the groundedness in our in our um, sit bones and in our legs and our heels. And once again, you, your knees should be facing up in the, in the same um, the same angle as your feet. I studied ballet when I was young and my knees are quite wonky. I have to really work at getting my knees in the right place with my feet. Okay, so then we go forward. We're, uh, I'm moving towards the right. So I'm actually, my, my torso is, is uh, moving down towards my right knee. And you can extend your arms out and just um, rest at any point along here. And you can stop whenever you feel discomfort. You should draw back and then move forward if you feel like it. If there's discomfort, you don't need to go any further at all. We're finding our good place, our place of ease in this. And we're experiencing that beautiful yogic sense of being in the moment, in this place, and finding, discovering things we didn't know before. And I'm just inhaling and exhaling and moving forward, moving forward and moving my chest forward. And you can drop your head down eventually if you feel like it. You can hold on to your toes. You can inhale and exhale. And now we're going to come up because that's intense. <laughs> now, you're going to move over to the other side. And by twisting your torso towards the other side, you're going to extend forward at the hip. And you're going to feel the chest moving forward so that it's not, uh, it's not, uh, so this side, uh, where all the asymmetrical, this side is much more difficult for me. And so I don't go down very well at all. And I am very careful of my hamstring because I have overstretched the tendons at the top of the hamstring that attach to the, to the um, hip. And uh, you don't want to do that. It's not good. <laughs> it takes a long time to heal. So all the time I'm feeling um, the energy and my muscles in my um, in my thigh move up towards my groin. That's the movement. It's, it's the movement is moving the, the um, muscles up towards my groin so that I'm not feeling any pressure at all in the tendons in my that attach to the uh, to the bone. And you can you can um, if you want to you can use your opposite leg to uh, to give you a little bit of um, a twist here. And you can go down as far as it feels comfortable. I'm using my left hand to keep myself upright because I don't want to go down too low. I, I, I don't trust this leg to be to work <laughs> in an advantageous way. So I'm, I'm just steadying myself here. And I'm feeling a sense of ease the longer I stay in this position. I feel myself drifting kind of drift forward and with the forward movement I move down a little bit. Now I'm going to come up and I'm just going to put my feet together and sit in this lovely position. Now you can put blankets or rocks or whatever underneath your legs. You don't want to overstretch your groin again and you want to just be able to, um, you want to just feel that you are, uh, once again, in a good place. You can hold on to your ankles and you can use that, that, that uh, clasp of your hands and the opening of your elbows to help you lift up your chest so that you are sitting upright. And with that, you can feel your knees move down to the ground, any amount. And if that's too painful, once again, don't do it. 
And I'm just sitting here, feeling the energy of the posture and the beauty of the posture. You can move your hands behind you and you can lift your chest up. And you can look up at the ceiling with your chest up. It's a lovely chest opening and you can really breathe and expansively here into your open chest. Now we're going to move into Shavasana on the ground and you might find you want a bolster or a blanket. You might keep your knees up. You might put your knees up the wall, whatever feels good. And we're just going to roll down with our knees up and we can stretch our arms up over our head, give ourselves a little stretch. We can, if we want to, we can stretch one leg out and the other leg out. We can give ourselves a little stretch. And while we're here, we can tense our buttocks and then we can let it drop. We can lower our arms so that they're at a bit of a V. We can make sure that our shoulder, we can draw our shoulder blades underneath our body and we can feel this ourselves settling in to the floor. After a good yoga class, I often feel that it's like one of those those strange films from childhood where suddenly the floor would open up and you would fall through it into some other realm. It's a bit of an Alice in Wonderland experience where the floor feels like it's elastic and it actually holds me. And you can make a fist with your hands and then release your hands and drop them. You can stretch up your feet and your, stretch out your legs and then you can drop them. You can lift your shoulders up and drop them. Lift your chest up and then drop it. And then you can move your head from side to side, slowly, carefully, feeling that lovely turn of your head, liberating your neck from whatever tension there is. And now we're just going to rest here. I'm going to be quiet. I'm just going to set up our breath for a bit our inhalations and our exhalations. And I imagine these are collective inhalations and exhalations. Even when we're in different places, our breaths are in synchrony. We're exhaling and inhaling. Exhaling.
And I'm just going to read a poem for you. Uh, this is by Charles Wright, an American poet. And uh, he's from Tennessee. He was born in Tennessee. And uh, it's from a book called Buffalo Yoga. Buffalo Yoga. Everything's more essential in northern light. Horses lie down in the dry meadow. Clouds trail like prairie schooners across the edge of the left horizon. Swallows jackknife and swan dive. Bees blip and flies croon. God with his good ear to the ground. Everything's more severe. Wind at a standstill and almost visible in the tamaracks. Golden sap on the lodgepole pine. Sorry. Anyway, who knows where the phone is? I'm sorry. Okay, golden sap on the lodgepole pine. Mosaic and Byzantine inside the day's cupola. Cuneiform characters shadowed across the forest floor. Everything seems immediate, like splinters of the divine, suddenly flecked in our fingertips. Forbidden knowledge of what's beyond what we can just make out. Saw grass blades in their willingness to dazzle and blend. Mnemonic waters, jack's knife, night jar. The soul, as Malamar sa Malamé says, is a rhythmical knot that form unties or reties. Each is its own music. The dark spider that chords and frets, unstringing and stringing, instrument, shadowy air walker, a long lamentation, poem whose siren song we're rocked by. The soul, as Mallarmé says, is, as a, is a rhythmical knot. I love that notion. So you can wiggle your toes, you can wiggle your hands, or you can decide you're just going to stay there for the entire day. You're just going on strike <laughs> and you're just going to rest and feel the ease and the steadiness that comes from the dedication you have to being on your yoga mat and joining us this morning. Thank you, reading to my teachers and to all of you and to the student in me and the teacher in you, namaste. Thank you so much.